Well, surprisingly, a lot of people, a lot of different people lectured me um, directly and indirectly. Um, you know, growing up in the 70s, um, and the music that inspired me the most it was most of most anything that came out of Philadelphia. And living in New York City, so close to Philadelphia, you know, occasionally would run down there and try and get as close to what I thought of was Mecca, you know, for music uh, back then uh, as I could, but didn't always have uh, uh, the best luck with it. But, but I got the records, you know, and listened to them and played them. And, you know, it, it was different then because music wasn't actually designed for the dance floor. People just wrote really incredible songs, and some of them had incredible energy, and uh, some of them had a slower tempo about them, but they all had something about them that moved you, you know what I mean? And the songwriters themselves, you know, I mean, that's what you aspire to. With all the albums that came out back then, um, and the way music was written, you know, uh, when you look at the back of the album covers, you know, you can read all the liner notes. Uh, that's how you educated yourself about, you know, about music and, you know, the life expectancy of a club DJ, if you will, back then was only three years. So, because it wasn't a profession, it's, it wasn't what it is now. The life expectancy was only three years, so you had three years to to hit it hard and burn it up and then make sure you had plans for what you're going to do when those three years was over with. And uh, I used to always uh, say to friends of mine that, you know, I'm not going to wake up one day and be 32 years old and still playing records. You know, I've got better things to do. I've got, I have dreams and goals and aspirations and other things I want to make happen. And uh, the joke is on me because I'm 57 now. And I'm so well past it all. You know what I mean? But uh, at least I got a chance to see it come into something that's really real and tangible and uh, widely accepted as a profession. Um, but to slip back to, you know, to the 70s and stuff, the way you educated yourself about music, which most guys don't do today, is um, they don't have those album covers to read. Uh, they have to actually literally go and find vinyl, some old, and nine times out of ten it's all old vinyl. But if they think enough about reading the liner notes about who produced, not just who produced, but who wrote these songs, you know, because usually it was a collective that made it all happen. You had your, your arrangers who did all the orchestral arrangements, and then they're the band members, and then they're the background singers, and the songwriters, and all this different stuff. As you're reading these liner notes, that's how you got educated about who did what. So... You know, after all these years of still doing this, you know, I mean, that's my education. Um, most of the guys today, their education will come from a place like this, from a facility like this. And when they look at the uh, different artists that are producing and making music now, um, they have CD jackets, hopefully, to uh, look at and see who's part of the collective. I mean, you know who certain what certain musicians are doing what. Who, you know who's the killer drummer and who's this and who's that. You know, um, hopefully, they have that and that they're utilizing that tool. But in a lot of given situations, you know, when you think about the guys that are not a part of an academy like this, that are trying doing it on their own, um, they don't know from that. They don't know what it is to do that. You know, and that I think can hurt them more than help them because. I don't care what you do, and I don't care how good you are at what you do. Education is everything. In whatever, you know, uh, art form or craft that you're trying to pursue, you know, a life in, um, you have to study them. And not just them, you know, I mean, because in music, I mean, I listen to some of everything. I, that's not to say that I like it all, but you have to you have to hear it all, especially if you want to be successful in making music. You have to hear everything. You know I mean, you don't have to like it all, but you have to hear it in order to better understand where you're going and what you're doing. You know, and you'd be surprised how much music you listen to over and over and over again. Um, eventually, to the point where you start making your own, how some of that stuff that you've heard, bits and pieces, begin to seep into yourself your subconscious and ultimately comes out in 
you know, what you're creating. Mm. Yeah. So you get, you get inspired from being educated and your music develops alongside what you hear around you. Always. Always. It's always. always changing. It's always changing, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I have some weeks where, you know, I'm completely overcome by so much um, uh, orchestral sounds. Um, and I will listen to it from sunup to sundown to sunup to sundown. You know, and then I have weeks where I'm just completely overcome by the whole post punk thing. You know, and I'll be listening to a lot of the old uh, post-punk stuff, you know what I mean? And that's just me, from sunup to sundown, whatever the case is. I, I go through those periods, and then all of a sudden I find myself one day, you know, inspired to really want to get in and do some writing and writing some music and working on things. And it all just comes flooding back. It's not that I'm trying to copy something that I heard, but you have all these different sounds floating around in the back of your head that by the time you do sit down and start, you know, working on something or making some music, um, it all kind of melds together and it turns into something completely different. Mm -hmm.